Good day to D's. Our topic today is continuing on with common factoring. And our goal, I can recognize binomial common factors and can use them to factor by grouping. So we're taking a look at binomial factoring. And when you look at the following question that's on the board here, uh, you should see two distinct parts to this question. And I've got parts in uh, quotes because we have to know what we mean by part. Well, the two distinct parts that I see in this question are this and this. And they're two sort of chunks of multiplication separated by this minus sign. And if we take a look at what they have in common, um, is just this bracket here. They have the same bracket. And since this bracket is multiplying the thing out front, it's considered a factor. And it's a common factor because it appears in both this and this. So those two things are kind of like terms. And the thing that's common in these terms is the x plus 3 and the x plus 3. So I'm going to take out that x plus 3. Whoops. I'm going to take out the x plus 3. And when I take out the x plus 3, to figure out what goes in the next set of brackets, I have to divide each of these things by x plus 3. And when I do that, those go away. Because x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is 1. And all we're left with now is 3x. So I'm going to put this in this bracket. Uh, minus 4x. Minus 4. And so now I've actually factored that. If we cared to, we could expand out both sides and see that they're both exactly the same thing. So the x plus 3 um, bracket is considered a factor because it is linked by multiplication to the other term in the part. Since it is a factor, we can divide it out just as we would any other common factor. So that just reiterates everything that I just said there. So now we're going to factor these ones fully. And we take a look at them again. I've got this group, and I've got this group, and they have the bracket in common. So since they have the bracket in common, I'm going to divide it out, 2x minus 5. And when I divide this term by 2x minus 5, the 2x minus 5 goes away. So I'm going to have a 4x left. And when I divide this term by 2x minus 5, the 2x minus 5 is going to go away. In fact, it becomes 1, and so I have minus 6. Now, this said factor the following fully, and I've got fully in bold letters because that means that maybe there's a little bit more than the binomial factor. And if you take a look at this bracket here, um, it has a common factor of 2 because I can take 2 out of both of those terms. So I need to take that common factor of 2 out, and we can write factors in any order we want. So usually you see the... Uh, the, bi or the monomial factor out front, and I'm taking it out of this bracket. So when I take 2 out of that bracket, I get 2x minus 3, and the 2x plus 5, or sorry, minus 5, is already as low as it can go. So now looking at the next one, um, we can see that they have a bracket in common as well. So since they have a bracket in common, that's what I'm taking out as a common factor. 5q plus 6. And when I take out 5q plus 6, this is going to go away, and this is going to go away. So I'm left with 4p squared minus 2p. Now again, notice in this bracket, each of those two, um, two terms uh, has a 2 in common. And we have 1p in common for both of those as well. So I can take out a 2p from that bracket, and I'm going to do that at the front. I'm going to take a 2p out of that bracket. And if I take a 2p out, I'm left with a 2p and minus 1. Remember, when we take it out, we're not subtracting, we're dividing. So 2p here divided by 2p is 1. So that's where this minus 1 comes from. And then the other bracket, the one at the start, the one that said 5q plus 6, it doesn't change because there's nothing that I can take out. So now we're going to use this factoring, um, binomial factoring, 
and something that's called factoring by grouping. So take a look at this complicated mess up here. 42MC minus 36MD plus 6N squared D minus 7N squared C. There are no common factors to take out of any of them. This one has M's and C's. This one has M's and D's. This one has N's and D's. And this one has N's and C's. So there's no common factor that can come out of the whole thing. However, I can pair them up. So in this case, we may be able to pair up terms that have common factors, like these two both have an M, and these two both have an N. Or if we wanted to, um, this has a D, and this has a D, and this one has a C, and this one has a C. So I could pair them up that way, and it's really not going to matter that much. So step one is to pair up your, that should say your, pair up your terms that have common factors and write them as an addition of two polynomials, or in this case, two binomials, because there's only two terms. So uh, I'm going to decide to put the, the C's with the C's and the D's with the D's. So I'm going to write 42MC minus 7N squared C. And I'm going to add to that the ones with the Ds, which is going to be negative 36MD plus 6N squared D. Okay, that was step one. Step two. Take the common factor out of each polynomial. Well, the common factor between in this bracket is going to be 7, because 7 goes into 42, uh, and that C. So I'm going to take a 7C out of here, so that's going to give me 6M. And if I divide this by 7C, I just get minus N squared. Now, I'm going to add to that. In this bracket, I can take a 6 out, because 6 divides into both of them, and I can take the D out. So I'm going to take out a 6D, and if I take out 6D, I get negative 6M from this term. And if I take out the 6D from this term, I have plus N squared. Now, it's kind of looking like I have a common factor here. That's close, but not quite. They have different signs. Um, but I could have fixed that if I had taken out this negative here for this term. I can take out that negative, and I could have taken out a negative 60. So if I had made this a negative 60, then this would have been a plus 6m and a minus n squared. And now this is the same as this. Whoop. Step three. You should now be able to see a binomial common factor to take out. Do it. If the binomial factor is close, so the signs are reversed, you should have taken a negative one out of the set of brackets. And that's just what I had done here. They were reversed, so I pulled a negative factor out of there. So now I, can, I do have that common binomial factor. That bracket is the same. So I'm going to pull that bracket out, and I get 6m minus n squared. And what's going to be left in there when I divide each of these things by 6m minus n squared? Those are going to go away, and so I'm going to have 7c minus 6d. And now that's factored as well as it could be. If I, if I expanded it out again, I would get right back to where I started from. So it says, check the remaining factors closely to make sure that there isn't a common factor to come out of one or both of them. Um, so I don't see any common factors on this one. If I take a look at them, there's no common factors between those two things. And there's no common factor between those two things. So I'm done. Now we're going to do, I'm going to do a few more of these. And I'll talk you through them a little bit here. So for the first one up here, uh, I'm going to group them so I have 28xy with 35x. So I write down 28xy plus 35x. 
and I'm going to put that in one binomial, and then I'm going to add to that the 25 plus 20y. Now, the common factor in the first bracket um, is a 7 and an x. So I can take 7x out, and when I take 7x out of 28xy, I'm left with 4y. And when I take 7x out of 35, I have plus 5. And out of the second one, I'm going to take out uh, a 5. And if I divide that by 5, I get 5 plus 4y. And you can see that those two brackets are now the same. So now I take out the 4y plus 5, and I'm left in it with 7x plus 5 when I take that out. Okay, so this one down here, I'm going to do that one next. And I'm going to group, um, let's see, I'm, I'm going to group it as it is. I'm going to put these two together, and I'm going to put these two together. So I get, I write it as two binomials, so 49x cubed minus 35 x squared plus 56x minus 40. Now it's important, I'm writing it as a, pro, as a plus here. Um, don't get uh, confused and leave that as a minus, that, or as a multiplication, or there's no sign in there. We get to that later. So the common factor in this first bracket is going to be 7x squared. And if I take 7x squared out, I'm left with 7x minus 5 when I divide both of those terms by 7x squared. And I'm going to take an 8 out of the second brackets, and I'll be left with a 7x minus 5, which is what we should get if I want to be able to factor this fully. So I'm going to take out that whole bracket, 7x minus 5, and then um, I will have 7x squared plus 8 left over. If you want to expand that using the uh, double distributive law or, or FOIL, um, you will see that you get right back to where you started from. Okay, I'm going to talk you through one more, and then I'll just give you the answers to the other three, and it would be a good idea if you put this on pause and tried to do them yourselves. Um, I'm going to group this... Uh, let's say I'm going to take the 21k squared and group it with the negative 60, and then I'll take the negative 84k squared and group it with the 15k. So I get 21k cubed minus the 60, and I'm going to add to that the negative 84k squared plus the 15k. Now, what can I take out of the first bracket? They don't have any k's in common. Um, I think I can take a 3 out. If I take a 3 out, I have 7k cubed um, minus 20. And if I take out over here, I can take out, um, well, I can take out a k. And if I take out a k, I get uh, negative 84k uh, plus minus um, 15. This isn't looking good. So if I hit the point where where I can't um, I can't go any further, and those two brackets aren't the same, I've probably grouped it so that it's not a very good grouping. So I'm going to just uh, try grouping it a different way. And I'm going to group this k cubed with this k squared. And I get 21k cubed minus 84k squared. And then I'm going to add to that the 15k minus the 60. Uh, let's see what happens with that one. Um, let's take... Well, I can actually take 21k uh, squared out of that first bracket, and I'm left with just a k minus 4. And the second bracket, uh, I can take 15 out of that, 
and I will be left with a K minus 4. And that looks a whole lot better. I can take the K minus 4 out, and I'm left with 21K squared plus 15. Now I have to take a look at that and make sure I can't take anything more out of there. And in this case, I actually can uh, take a 3 out of both this and this. So I'm going to take the 3 out of there, and I get 7K squared plus 5, and then I still have that K minus 4. And now that's factored as fully as possible. And now here's the answer to the other two questions on there. I didn't walk you through it quite as much, but have a look at it. There's two places that I want to point out, um, something that was a little bit iffy. Um, when I got to this line here, I noticed that these two brackets were almost the same, but they were reversed. They had the same things in them, but they had different signs. And so what I did was I pulled out a negative 6, or just pulled out another negative 1, and all that does is switch the signs in it. So now that does match this one here. And so that one was a little bit um, a little bit tricky in there if you happen to group it that way and not see that you should take the negative 6 out to begin with. Now this one down here, the only thing that I want to point out is that I grouped two things here that didn't actually have a common factor, um, but that doesn't mean that we can't end up with it working out because as you can see, uh, when I pulled out the common factor from, from the first group, uh, I actually get the same thing as what as what the second group was. You just have to be careful that when you're pulling that out, um, pulling this r minus 8 out as a common factor, you're dividing. So when I took r minus 8 out, I had to divide this term by r minus 8, which gave me the 8r squared. And I had to divide this term by r minus 8. And any time you divide something by itself, your answer is 1. So that's why I have an 8r squared plus 1 there when um, that's a common mistake that people would actually think that that was a 0 and it was just 8r squared because they start subtracting instead of dividing. And really, taking out common factors is a process of division. So we still need a 1 when I divide something by itself. And that concludes today's lesson on factoring by grouping.